Hello everyone. Welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, I am going to show you more things related to KMS. We are going to see and understand how can you go ahead and use encrypt and decrypt function using a particular customer master key. How can you go ahead and encrypt some data later on? How can you decrypt that data? What are things which you should take care as you know while doing that? How can you go ahead and create a new customer master key? All of that with an example. So let us get started. This one will be quick, but there would be a lot of stuff to grab. So please see carefully. And if you have not subscribed already, do that. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we are there uh, in the IM dashboard and I have clicked on encryption keys. As you can see, I've got two keys here. The first one is AWS managed. The second one is customer managed, which means I have created it, right? The difference between the two, you can, you can see that all the AWS managed will have an alias like AWS slash the name of the service, okay? So if you go ahead and click on this, you can see that you there is there is nothing much for you to edit or, or do anything like that, right? By default, uh, there will be one AWS managed customer master key per service. When I say per service, this is for the services with support encryption. For example, RDS, EFS, S3, Redshift, and things like that, right? So code commit. So in, in my case, in this particular account in North Virginia region, as you can see, North Virginia. So in North Virginia region, I am using code commit service and I have chosen to do encryption. That's why this key got provisioned for me. Whereas uh, the second one, which is my key, this I have created. And uh, that's why you can see there are a lot more things which I can go ahead and manage that who all will have permission uh, to, to use it, who would, which of the users or roles would act as administrator for this key. Uh, I can attach policy with this key that will be able to use, of course, uh, attach tags and enable rotation if I want, right? I can enable rotation, great. So those are the things. If you have to, if you have to create a new key, what should you do? Let's look at it quickly. Press on create key, give it a name. Let's say key two, you know, some some name, whatever you like. And then you can go ahead and press next. If you want to add some tags, you can go ahead and give it. All of you should be knowing tags. I've talked about it multiple times already. All right. Next is define key administrative permission. So this is that who can administer this key, right? So you can go ahead and select any of these users. So whatever, I've got different users in my account. I can choose that. I can also choose certain roles and those uh, user or roles would then be able to administer this key. If we want to also, we can give whether these users or roles can actually delete this key or not. So you can, you may choose that. Press on next and then our key usage permissions. Who all in your account would should be able to use this particular key? Of course, in order to encrypt, decrypt and do things like that, right? So you can go ahead and select that. Understand that for usage, you can even give permission to external account user. So that means you can add some other account, some other AWS account here, and then users within that AWS account will be able to access your key. All right, that's it. And then you just say next, and you have to review this and say finish, and your key would be created. I'm not gonna create that because I've already created one. Okay, all right. Now, let me show you a few things. So I've got two customer master key, as you can see. We talked about generate data key already in the previous video. If you have not seen the previous video, please go and look at it and then come to this video. So generate data key, we already saw what happens with generate data key. Using a particular customer master key, you will get a new data key and it will give you two things, the plain format of data key and encrypted format, right? Both the things. Now let us go ahead and try to look at encryption and decryption today. So what I will do, I will show you that how can you go ahead and encrypt some text using a customer master key. And the customer master key which I would use would be this one, my key which I have created. Okay, all right, so let me click here so that I should be able to pick the ARN when required. So let me go here. So as you can see, uh, you know, I'm using a Windows machine, of course. So just letting you know. And uh, there's a folder called testing. 
in this folder what I have done is I have created a file called zuzo1.txt so let's consider that this is my base file it has got some plain text okay, let me show you that so it reads welcome to knowledge India please share and subscribe to our channel for more AWS videos Wow okay so this is the plain text now I'm gonna do next set of things we'll first go ahead and encrypt it so AWS KMS encrypt sorry encrypt and we need to give plain text understand this is plain text and uh, the, the meaning the test text which needs to be encrypted that you need to pass here and uh, so the, it is there in the file 001.txt so that's what I'm passing and we need to say using what key are we going to encrypt it so let me just copy this sorry okay so this will go ahead and basically encrypt it now one more thing what I want to do is I want to take that take the encrypted stuff out and I want to write it to a file but let me show you something before that let me press enter here so that you can see the encrypted thing so here is the stuff so using this key ID the encryption happened and cipher text blog blob so the encrypted text right in binary format is this but understand one thing these um, commands like encrypt and decrypt the you know uh, while they transmit data they do base 64 encoding for that so whatever you are seeing here this is base 64 encoded and we'll have to go ahead and decode it so let's do one thing first let us go ahead and write this content onto a file so let me just do this and what I can do you can go ahead and look at it you can just take the output text and only this part so what I'm doing is because when the output the you know as you can see by default here the output format is JSON that's why with the result you see this double quotes here and you see the double quotes here so if I change the output as text those double quotes will go away and then I'm using hyphen hyphen query which would mean that I'm only interested in this particular thing cipher text blob and I'm not interested in the other one and then I want to go ahead and write out all of this to some file so I can go ahead and give the name of one file so I'm just gonna say 002 dot base 64 because this is going to be base 64 encoded but you, of course you can name it anything you want so I'm just gonna press enter and this should create a new file for me uh, let us see so new file is created if I go ahead and try to open it So you can see whatever was shown earlier that is written here, right? Great. So next thing is we need to decode this and convert it to um, to binary because uh, as I told you, this is blob, right? The result which is coming is binary object. Now, now because it was base64 encoded, we need to decode it. So there is a in Windows side there is a utility called decode. You can go ahead and use it. Cert util decode which file you want to decode this what do you want to call the new file I'll just say dot txt so this should decode it and it has decoded now you can see here let us try to open this so this would be non readable for you because it is it is in the binary format right so great all right so as you can see uh, the text is encrypted now next thing we want to decrypt it so AWS KMS decrypt now when we are decrypting let me show you here when you are, when we are decrypting all you have to do is you have to just give the cipher text or the encrypted text you don't need to say what key and anything because the content which is there here this this encrypted stuff this has or the cipher text it has got both the things it has got the actual text in encrypted format and in addition to that it also has it also has the key you know the key ID using which this encryption has happened 
so you don't have to pass the key id again while decrypting it is present along with the encrypted data the key which was used to encrypt that so i will just say uh, decrypt and then we'll say cipher text uh, blob and we need to give now in this case because the file which you are passing that it contains binary data so you need to say file b colon double slash if it if the file contains normal readable text then you can say file colon double slash if it has binary data you should say file b colon double slash right so there's a two dot txt okay so we'll go ahead and try to press enter and let's see what happens right so as you can see the decryption happened and the plain text has been written but plain text is not the same why because the plain text also which has come back is base 64 encoded so we'll have to go back and decode it right so let's do that first let us go ahead and say um, output as text and the query what do we want to pick up we want to pick up plain text and we want to give it to final one file i'll call it dot base 64 great so this should create a new file with actually this content right which is the decrypted content but in base 64 encoding so let me show you that here it is oh. great now we can just go ahead and decode it so util Hyphen decode and we'll say 03.s to 03.txt. Okay, so decoding is done. Let us go here and try to see this file. And we have got our text back. Great. So I hope you understand that how did we do the, the encryption and decryption, things related to blob which you need to take care. Right? So it doesn't matter which language you go ahead and program and things like that. These are few things which you need to keep in mind. Let's talk about one, two more important stuff here. Um, what about key rotation? I wanted to talk to you about key rotation. So see, we, we have this uh, customer master key created and I told you yesterday that you can go ahead and opt for key rotation. When you opt for key rotation, what happens? The content of this key gets changed every year but think of this scenario let's say today is uh, 1st november 2018 and today you go ahead and encrypt some data using this key right now if after one year in in november 10 2019 uh, of course the key would have been rotated and at that time, if you want to go ahead and decrypt, decrypt the data, right? Whatever was encrypted on 1st November 2018, if you want to decrypt it at that time, how will it get decrypted? Because we are saying that the key content has been rotated. So what happens when, this is a key thing, some of you might be knowing it already, but understand whenever key rotation happens, all the, all the older content of the key is also maintained, right? So for, I mean, what, what, what I'm trying to say here is, is let's say for example if on on 1st november 2018 just assuming that content of the key was something like this this is the content of the key for example on 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 1st november 2018 now later on when let's say 1st november 2019 it gets changed to something else Let's understand like this, right? This is the new content. So though moving forward from first number 2019, any new encryption which happens using this key ID, let's say this is the content for my key, right? So moving forward from first number 2019, when, when any new data is encrypted, this particular content would have been used to encrypt that. But as part of this my key, this older thing also would be maintained, right? Understand that. And what happens is, if you try to if you try to decrypt, if you try to decrypt the uh, if you try to decrypt some data which has been encrypted now, 
using this particular uh, content it would have been encrypted so if you want to decrypt it later on as well it will work because the key hasn't uh, you know um, hasn't lost this particular information the key is keeping that so your decrypt will work at that time as well this is something important which you should be knowing of course all of this is transparent because you don't have to go and um, you know manage it all together so just wanted to tell you let's talk two minutes on uh, on the pricing uh, when you when you use kms there are two aspects for which uh, you will be charged first is for every for every customer master key you will be charged right so um, uh, per month you have to pay one dollar for per customer master key okay and uh, there's an important thing for a customer master key with key material generated by kms if you opt in to have cmk automatically rotated each year each newly rotated version will raise the cost by one dollar per month so so what, what we are saying is this is the thing which i was explaining you so let's say from next year your my key will have these two material or two content right so that means the cost would become two dollars per month so that is something you should understand and in addition to that um, you are charged for all for the uh, for the for the api calls so the encrypt decrypt uh, apis which you call you you get charged for that right i mean for 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 other things as well but the but the point is for the for the per api call you get charged and the and the charge for that is like 0 0.03 dollars per 10000 api calls so that way you get charged there are a few examples which are given here you can just go ahead and read it it is very very simple so um, this is good stuff um, <clears throat> understand it is possible that you can go ahead and either create a key uh, altogether here or it is also possible that you can go ahead and um, uh, you know uh, the 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 content of the key or the material of the key you can import as well so if you want to import you like you can generate a key from your on prem system as well and if you want to import it here you can do it here instead of KM is generating the content for you. You can choose external and you can say, yes, I agree, understand. And when you go ahead to the next thing, you will be able to, you'll get option to actually, actually specify that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's all it is. Um, I hope uh, you understood how to use KMS keys and how keys work together uh, with encrypted data in what way the key gets stored and things like that. Uh, please continue to explore i'll leave some good uh, links in the description uh, you should read and try to explore more please share the video with your friends if you have liked it and if any doubts please let me know get connected with us on linkedin to know more updates thank you guys bye bye take care you are watching this video on knowledge india we request you to subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can get updates regarding all our upcoming videos you can also go ahead and look at our playlists where you can find different videos related to certifications. If you have any query or request, go ahead and post it at the community tab. Thanks for watching. See you.